We all have this inner longing in our heart that can only be slaked or quenched, this thirst that can only be quenched by the Word of God. Again, I highly recommend. I'm Terry Knight, the pastor of New Life Community Church. I thank you so much for turning us on, tuning us in. I trust, as always, that the Lord's going to bless you all over the place as we fellowship together here around the Word of God for the next several moments. We began a new teaching last week. We're going to try to follow up with that during this particular session. It's one that we've titled The Application. Now watch this. How many of you know, even though you're hearing my voice now and you will hear the teaching if you stay tuned to this particular edition, we have to purpose to make application of what we hear. Just because a message or a conversation hits our ears doesn't necessarily mean that we process that. We have to put forth some effort and purpose and resolve in our own heart, our own will to make application of that which is put on our ears. And that's what we're dealing with. Now, I'm going to jump right on into that without a lot of delay. I want to read one verse. It's not really our text passage. Our text passage is taken out of Proverbs chapter 23. But here's an additional passage. It's found in the, the New Testament book of Revelation. And this verse is used as kind of a utility verse in many respects when it comes to the salvation experience. But listen particularly to what it says in terms of application. Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 20. Here's what it says. Here I am. This is Jesus speaking. I stand at the door and knock. I stand and knock. If anyone hears my voice, listen to this, and opens the door. Hears my voice and opens the door. I will come in and eat with him and he with me, or fellowship with him, as the case might be. I want to call your attention specifically to that little phrase, and opens the door. Have you purposed to open the door when Christ speaks? Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for the opportunity that I have to come to speak into the ears and into the hearts and the, of each one listening in. And I pray that by your Spirit, you would speak by your word to their spirit. May they get a hold of your word, purpose to make application of it, allow it to change their life and change their direction to be in tune with your purpose and plan for them. I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, you hang on here for just a little while. Call all your friends and neighbors and let them know new life is on. We'll be back here in just a little while to wrap things up. God bless. this mean? Does it mean that? Brother, what does this mean? Does it mean that? What do you, what, what does this mean? Question, studying it, getting down to the real nitty gritty of what's going on. Listen, beloved, here is a great question. Why should we study? Preacher, should I study just because you say so? Well, you know, Terry Knighton once said, boy, you can add a dollar and a quarter to that and get you a cheap cup of coffee. Amen? Why should we study? What is our goal? What is the end game of studying the Word? Paul helps us understand this when he wrote to his uh, protege, Timothy, in his second letter, chapter 2, verse number 15. Many of you memorized this at Vacation Bible School or perhaps junior camp many, many years ago. And here's what it says. Do your best. How many of you can do your best? Are you following me? How many of you can do your best? You can do your best. That's what God asked of you, for you to do your best. Wouldn't you just hate it if 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Now y'all listen up. Y'all need to be better than Pastor T. 
But it says do your best. Do your best to do what? To present yourself to God, not pushed and prodded and begged, but do, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman. Everybody say a workman. A workman or a workwoman, as the case might be. Who does not need to be ashamed and who, look at this, we're asking why study, who correctly handles the word of truth. Will you fill in number six with me, please? Beloved, study is so much more than a cursory reading. Is it important to read? Yes. But let's be encouraged to take it to the next level. Why should we study? We study to understand and to make proper application. On occasion, people tell me I do not understand this and that about the Bible. I've said to you before, God put it out there so that we would understand it. He didn't put it out there to confuse us. I think we talked about that last week. Listen, beloved, if there's something you don't understand, examine it. Ask some questions. Talk to somebody that has been there, done that, and you will learn how to make proper application in time. You can understand it. Apply it to your life. Study is purpose to get to the meat of the matter. How many of you know that there's surface reading and then you can really get down to the nitty-gritty in terms of the Word of God? Getting down to the meat of the matter. Not only understanding what is put forth, but much more practically why it's put forth and how it should affect our lives. D.L. Moody said this, Dwight L. Moody, quote, the scriptures were not given to increase our knowledge. Let me pause right there. Because if you didn't hear any more, you might come away from that thinking, what in the world? The scriptures were not given to increase our knowledge. Did you know that? What's the end of that? The scriptures were not given to increase our knowledge, but to change our lives. You see, if what you believe doesn't change the way you live, then it really doesn't matter what you believe. I've said that till it's, it's becoming cliche. I need to have a bumper sticker made and put that on the uh, build them up mobile out there. If what you believe doesn't change the way you live, it really doesn't matter what you believe. The scriptures were not given just to increase our knowledge, but to change our lives. Wouldn't you just hate to get up on Sunday and shave your legs and get all dressed up and drag the fam to church? By the way, this is one preacher that appreciates, and I know what it, the, the effort and the energy that it takes, in particular those of you that have a lot of little children. They're not very cooperative sometimes. It's hard to put pants on the young and just run and say amen right there. I know what that, but you get all that done. You get them in the car and you head and you get them all buckled in. And uh, oh my goodness, I don't even want to talk about those child safety seats and all. It's just a, it's a pain in the neck to do, do all of that. And I can't imagine doing that. And then the preacher just tells some cute little entertaining stories and shakes my hand on the way out and tells me, you have a nice week now. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm going to tell you from my perspective, we need some instruction, beloved, in particular in this day and age, some instruction that will impact our lives and transform our lives so that when we leave here, we're more determined than ever to tell Satan what he can do with his roadblocks and to tell our neighbor how they can be an overcomer and how they too can be assured of their eternal life with God Almighty and and. and make sure that they do not spend eternity separated from God. Are you with me? We all, and I believe this, we all have this inner longing in our heart that can only be slaked or quenched, this thirst that can only be quenched by the Word of God. Again, I highly recommend it. Number three, read the Word, study the Word. Thirdly, 
How do I apply his instruction to my life? It's number seven on your notes. You can either put meditate in the blank or perhaps memorize or put both. I'm using them interchangeably. The discipleship material that we use here at New Life, how many of you have been certified in our discipleship so far? Can I see your hands? Get them way up high, way up high. If you haven't, you're a candidate to go through that, and you are on my target list. I just want you to know that. Uh, we, we're looking for you. You remember the shirt Uncle Sam wants you? Well, Pastor T wants you. Our own discipleship material puts this forth, and it says, Most Christians hear the Word of God preached, but only a few learn the profit of conserving what they hear. The final touch in that process, reading the Word, studying the Word, the final touch in that process is meditation upon or memorization of what you hear. Listen to Luke chapter 11 and verse 28. He replied, Jesus speaking, Blessed rather are those who hear the Word of God. Church, is that the end of that sentence? Really? I must have left something out. Oh, there it is, hidden under one of my highlighters. Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and, everybody say and, and, and obey it. You understand the difference between hearing and hearing and applying and doing. Do you? But don't make me preach this whole message again. Are you with me? We open our service. I told you during the opening this morning that I was going to mention this later. Here it is later. We open our service each week with a reading from Revelation. Why do we do that? If newcomers coming in here might think that's pretty creepy. So, wow, preacher, I come to your church and the first thing you do is talk about creatures and beasts and all this kind of stuff. Listen to the Word of God. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 3. Chapter 1, verse number what? Verse 3 of what chapter? 1, 3. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. Do you want to be blessed? Read Revelation. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this property. There's that word again. And blessed are those who hear it. I bless you right off the get-go on Sunday morning by reading for you from the book of Revelation. But look at this. Blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. The time is near. Preacher, you believe that the Lord's going to come back in our time? Well, watch this. I do believe that. I believe I'm going to experience it, but it doesn't matter. Here's something else I do know. If you live long enough, you're going to die. Are you with me? No ifs, ands, and buts about it. You'll never get out of this world alive. It's true. The time is near, and we're being told what to do with that time. No doubt one of the most oft-memorized scripture from the Bible is found in Psalm 119 and verse number 11. It says this, the, the psalmist says, I have hidden your word in my heart. It's, I, I've asked it to come in. Come on in here. I've hidden your word in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against you. Will you consider this memorized scripture or what I'm going to call stored scripture is alike a canteen full of water to the man that is trekking across the desert. The hot, steamy, dry, barren desert. That canteen is like a little portable oasis from which that one might continually drink. The Word of God is like that for us. Think about the myriad of times during the day, and a myriad may be a slight exaggeration, but think about the number of times during your day when you can't stop 
and read or study the Word. Perhaps you're running a machine or you're busily involved in your work, even at home, taking care of the cares of life. There are times when you can't stop and read, but we can pull up from the oasis of stored Scripture, that which might sustain us in the meantime. How many of you know you can whistle while you work? You can quote the Word while you work. You can pray while you work. You can sing while you work. You can. Say amen right there. Praise the Lord. And let, let me quickly draw this to a conclusion this morning. The New Testament picture of the man, woman, boy, and girl, that would cover everybody. The New Testament picture of the one that fails to do these things, read, study, and memorize or meditate on the Word. The picture of that one is bleakly characterized or portrayed in Matthew chapter 13. You Bible scholars will remember that Matthew chapter 13 is dealing with ones. One of the, the persons or people or people groups that it's dealing with is those that failed to establish a solid root system. Spiritually speaking, those who failed to establish a solid root system, those who failed to conserve, who failed to guard the word that was entrusted to them. So Matthew chapter 13 verse 21 says this, Since he, since that one has no root, he lasts only a short time. Spiritually speaking, it's like rah, rah, re, And then all of a sudden, they're defeated. They only last a short time, spiritually speaking. When trouble, look at this, when trouble or persecution comes because of the word. And church, let me be quick to remind you this morning that trouble will come because of the word. What, preacher? I thought when I become Christian, I wouldn't have no more problem. Can I talk to you from my heart just a sec? Pastor T, your pastor, the troubles are going to come. They're going to come. The enemy will see to it. And in order to prove you strong and to prove him stronger, God will allow that in your life. If you don't believe it, go read the book of Job at some point in time. Listen, I'm not here to powder it up and pretty it up. I'm here to give it to you straight. And I trust that you caught that this morning. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, that one that does not have a deep root system will quickly fall away. Is it your plight in your spiritual life to quickly fall away? You may be, and there's some folks, they just shout on Sunday and the rest of the week they're so defeated. What is up with that? Oh, my goodness. Or maybe they shout once and you never hear it again the rest of their life. I'm talking quote, unquote, shout, shouting the praises of God, proclaiming the word of God, being a witness for the Lord, letting your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You don't want to quickly fall away, do you? Do you? Some of you seem a little iffy about that. A fellow by the name of Dawson Trotman, who was an evangelist and the founder of the Navigators, said this, and I quote, I know of no form of intake of the Word which pays greater dividends for the time invested than scripture memory. That helps me to realize and it helps me to establish to you that one of the greatest areas of need among believers, among the body of Christ is the ability and the will to make application of the word of God in our own personal life. Let's see if we can draw this to a close. Even though you do apply the word and you do that regularly and systematically, you do that faithfully, you apply yourself, you've learned how to do that. There will be occasions, no doubt, when you still seek to prove that you are a human being. You know what I'm saying? There will be times when your flesh, how many of you know our spirit has to live in this old flesh? There will be times when your flesh gets the best 
of your, perhaps I should say, gets the worst of you. Nobody's happy about that. Are you happy when that happens? I'm not happy when that happens, either for me or you. But it's a natural product of fallen humanity. Now, we've been given something to help us with that. It's called indwelling Holy Spirit, and it is a supernatural walk, not a natural walk. But, beloved, I agree with John Wesley. There's no such state of grace that, enab- that renders a man incapable of sin. That was John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. One of the greatest countermeasures, and I told you that not to discourage or to depress you, but to say this, one of the greatest countermeasures for this malady of humanity and our fallenness is a wealth of stored up truth, the oasis that I was talking about earlier, to draw from when you've just been zapped by your humanity. I can't think of anything to pick me up any quicker when I have had a boo-boo, a spiritual boo-boo, than to get into the Word of God, especially perhaps to read the Psalms and to read after David. Boy, you're talking about a boo-boo. He was an expert at it. But read the Psalms. And I would trust that you would come away from that encouraged that even in our failures, the Word of God can pick us up and dust us off and put the broken pieces back together again. Listen, that kind of meditation, that kind of memorization, if you please, of God's Word, that can be done in a myriad of settings, not the least of which is what you're enduring right now. As you hear the word preached, does it stir you when you hear the word of God preached? It does, still does. I preach, I've been preaching for over 46 years now. And sometimes the very art of it can bore you. I'll just be honest with you. You do it like everybody, everything else. But I will tell you this, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It's powerful, powerful. And it will stir one, not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And when you hear that word preached, beloved, it can stir you in ways that nothing else will. Also, as you read the Bible, perhaps in your daily devotional time, do you have that time? Do you have that daily devotional time? Well, yeah, preacher, but sometimes I don't have my daily devotional time but once a month. What about as you pray and reflect on what you are studying, going over the verses that you have memorized I want to conclude this morning by asking you a very simple question what kind of relationship do you have with God what kind of relationship do you have with God and with God's word our text says it well apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge One last thing to put a period on this with regards to applying the word and applying it to your life. Can you be encouraged to incorporate worship into your word time? You know what I'm saying? Some worship, real worship, adoring, honoring, praising the Lord. Be encouraged to include some worship into your word time. Satan, the devil, the enemy, hates it. When we sing to our Heavenly Father. Did you know that? Some of you haven't figured that out yet. But it's true. He hates it when we sing to our Heavenly Father. He can't stand it. He will get out of the room. He'll leave you alone for a few minutes. Again, read through the Psalms. You'll find out what I'm telling you. And a lot of Old Testament passages will bear out that what I'm telling you is true. He can't stand it. In particular, can you be encouraged to include maybe some warfare lyrics in your worship time? You familiar with the old song, Covered by the Blood? Boy, that is an old one, isn't it, Tiff? That's not one of those new 7-Eleven songs. They are covered by the blood. They are covered by the blood. My sins are all covered by the blood. My iniquity so vast have been blotted out at last. My sins are all covered by the blood. 
hair just stood up on the back of my head and it didn't come from my singing. Hallelujah. Satan, you hear that? They're covered by the blood. They're covered by the blood. What about that song we sing so often? And we're going to sing it here in just a sec. Victory in Jesus. You ever thought about just singing that back to your father during your times of meditation? Or maybe those old songs, and again, I'm telling my age, Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. Oh, yeah. Can you be encouraged to develop some worship into your time of reading and study? Beloved, let's wrap it up uh, this way. Let me call your attention once again to this quote from Dawson Trotman. Will you listen to this? I know of no form of intake of the Word which pays greater dividends for the time invested than Scripture memory. Isn't it true? To, to read the Word is one thing. To put forth the effort to memorize it is a whole nother issue. And I trust that you have purposed to read and study and know and memorize the Word. The, the whole process of memorization is, will allow for us to make application of the Word in our life. In other words, the more we read it and study it and know it and, and put forth the effort to, to really purpose for it to change us, beloved, that can make a huge difference in our everyday walking around life. I trust that you have developed a study time a prayer time, a systematic time when you pause, you take a step back and listen for that still small voice, which is Holy Spirit of God, that teaches you and seeks to, uh, to help you, to influence you, to make application of this Word in your life. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every one listening in, and I pray that by your Word you would impact and impress the lives of each one listening. And Lord, I trust that each one listening would purpose to be about your business, would will to make application in their own life. We'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Beloved, before I get out of here, let me take this opportunity to encourage you to come out and be a part of any and all of the ministry activities that are taking place here at New Life. I'm telling you, for the last several weeks, it just seems like the Lord's been moving in such a fresh way. We have a morning worship celebration Sunday at 10 o'clock. We also have midweek activities Wednesday evening, something for nearly every member of the family. The children, we call it KFC, Kids for Christ, our youth group, the New Life Youth, man alive, how encouraging that is, as well as our adult meetings. Sunday morning at 10, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and we'd encourage you to come and be a part of any and all of these activities. Well, my time is gone. I must get out of here. Thank you so much for listening in. I trust you're going to be blessed very much for purposing to be with us tonight. And I want to remind you, beloved, that Jesus is coming back. Is He coming back for you?